It was 65 degrees less than a week ago. And then I woke up to this today. But it was kind of perfect because I need to talk about a book today that takes place in winter and a lot of the hopelessness and weakness and things like that center around the weather and around being so cold you can't move anymore. And so when I woke up to this, I took that as a sign that I needed to come outside and um, give you a more visceral <laughs> review of the book Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis. The full synopsis of this, as well as links to the book, can be found in the info below. So you can check all of that out there, but basically it's a book that takes place right at the tail end of World War II and centers around sinking of a ship that dwarfs the Titanic. It's in winter in Germany, so I figured here in the snow with the dark open water behind me would be kind of perfect to talk about this. But hopefully I can get through it because every time I try to record a wintry book video for you guys, the battery freezes and my camera dies. So I have three cameras with me today. We're hopefully going to be able to get through it, but very thick padded fingers crossed. I should mention before I start that this review is part of a promo that Penguin Random House is doing. They sent the book Salt to the Sea to a list of vloggers this month and everyone who reviews it in February, which was its release month, is entered in like a promo thing that they're doing. That said, it's something I wanted to read anyway, and I've been wanting to read Ruta Sepetis for ages, and it doesn't in the least affect my review. None of this ever does, so I'm honest, always. I think you guys know that. Brutally honest is the catchphrase that's often applied to me. So <laughs> on to my thoughts. And there are positives and negatives. I'll start with the negatives because they pretty much quickly went away. Um, the book is told in four different POVs from four different characters, all young. It shifts very quickly between them all. I mean, each chapter is generally less than two pages. I think I talk a lot about multiple POV books and how hard it is to win me over with them. I am brutal when it comes to them. It can be very pet peevy for me and something that I can find very gimmicky and obnoxious, and so one wrong move and you're pretty much gonna incur my wrath. Um, and in the beginning I thought this was going to. Partly because of those short chapters, I call that the Dan Brown style of writing, where you have multiple POVs and they switch back and forth very quickly, trying to amp up the tension, and instead it just kills the tension, in my opinion. And so when I saw these very short chapters and the jumpiness of it, I thought this is gonna get old real fast. And in some ways it was kind of frustrating, but it moved it along kind of naturally and allowed you to always get the sort of current perspective as the story moves forward, as they march along toward this possible impending doom. You know where everyone is at any moment, so it actually was kind of nice. And for the most part I feel like all of the perspectives add something to the story and should be there. There was one that I wanted to kind of skip over because he just annoyed me but he, he was necessary and he gives an interesting perspective and he's one of those little wormy, weasley characters that you just want to hate and you want to see bad things come to him but you don't know if that's going to happen and it adds a different side, it adds another aspect to the story. So it actually was good, I didn't mind the multi POVs, but if you do, if you don't like switching perspectives or super short chapters like that or you find it gimmicky, um, you might not enjoy this one. There was also some sort of writerly heavy-handedness that I found a little gimmicky. Some people will love it, so sort of repetition and um, an echoing back to things. Some people will really like that and it will feel very impactful, and some will feel like it's overdone, and I kind of felt like it was overdone. Now, for a YA book, that'll maybe be less the case. I think a lot of teens would probably appreciate it and it might not be something they've seen before and it can drive a point home, but it can feel very like someone trying to really push your nose in something and get this. This is the point. This is the message. This is what I want you to take from this. And that can feel a bit like the author is talking down to you or are too pleased with themselves or something like that. So it can get kind of old, but fortunately it didn't happen frequently. So it's not something that I would say, don't read it because of, of this. It's not a gimmicky book. It just has a few gimmicks in it that some people will love and some people will really not. My notes are all smushy and falling apart from the snow. Now onto the things that I did like. 
because as I said, there wasn't much that I didn't like and I got over that pretty quickly. So for the most part, I really enjoyed this. I thought that the perspectives were all unique, that the voices didn't sound like each other. There are headings at the top of each chapter that tell you who's narrating, but I feel like you would know that even without reading that, and that's what a perspective should be. You should know whose voice you're in. I also think it has a really good sort of ominous feeling to it. I mean, of course, with any Holocaust story you know going in, there's going to be a lot of brutality and carnage and a pretty high death toll, and so there's this feeling of, since you're in these characters' heads and you're getting their perspective, you kind of find yourself wondering if they're going to make it. Do they all make it because you're getting their story? Do only some of them make it and their story's going to peter off? Do none of them make it and it just ends? So it does kind of amp up the tension a little bit and help add to that that feeling of being attached to these characters and wanting them to live, but also detachment that comes with knowing they might not. So it does make for an interesting reading experience. And it's very quick. It's a very, very quick read because of those shifting POVs and those very short chapters. I read it in two sittings. I probably could have read it in one if I had wanted to power through. Um, it's very quick. And for all of its ominous tones and the fact that it's in World War II, it's not a sobber. It's not something that sort of pulls at your heartstrings in a really false way and tries to make you cry. It's very just open and if I say casual it sounds like it just brushes off the atrocities and that's not the case, but I feel like it's sort of authentically casual. When you've been seeing these, I mean it's at the tail end of the war, so when you've been seeing these horrible things happen for the better part of a decade, at a certain point I feel like it would become every day, it is every day, it's literally every day that you're seeing these things and knowing these things and wondering where your family and your friends are. And so in a weird way you get used to it, but at the same time you can never get used to that. So things will happen and it's not necessarily dwelled on. Sometimes it's hinted at, sometimes it's subtle and you have to read between the lines, or sometimes it is outright stated what happens and the horror of it, but then you go on, you trudge on, you hope you're not next, and I think it makes it more impactful when something does hit you, when you have the sudden realization of the horrors that these people are facing. So I found it very effective, and if you are, like me, not always in the mood for something that's going to make you ugly cry, um, this is probably a good one because it, it may pull that out of you, but not on every page and not like it's trying to work you over. Um, it's very straightforward and it just is what it is and it does hit you every now and then and you're like oh my god and it does drive home like how can people do these things to each other but the characters still struggle on and they still fight and help each other and have hope where they can and are resilient and I think that's a really great way to approach a story like this especially for teens and young adults so um, it works on that level for me. And so that is what I thought of Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis. I would fully recommend this for just about everyone. It would be great also in classrooms. You know, if you are a teacher and you teach teens, I think this would be a great one to read. It is quick, it's engaging, it's centered around teens, which isn't something you always get in war stories and Holocaust stories. So that might help even drive it home more for them. And it's engaging and just powerful where it needs to be and subtle where it needs to be. So I really, I really enjoyed it. And as I discovered in the note about the author, Ruta is a Michigander, so thumbs up for that. But that is all for this quick, snowy review. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Ignore this big glob of snow that's been on my glasses. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you've read this, what you think. And until next time, thanks for watching and happy reading.